Transforming Roly premiered on the Zeus Network this Sunday night, and the show is going to be a flop, a chop, if the network doesn't do something in that editing room and do something fast. And you better believe we're going to talk about it. Welcome back to Damien After Dark. If you're new here or you have not subscribed yet and you know what to do, go ahead and click that subscribe button and the little bell icon to turn on your post notifications. That way you get locked into all things Damien After Dark and you never miss a beat, all right? Also, if you don't mind, click that thumbs up icon right down there and like this video. That helps me get into the algorithm so more beautiful people like yourself can find me right here and we can grow this family and keep this party going, okay? Join the conversation as well and get in the comment section. I'd love to hear your thoughts and opinions on the season premiere episode of Transforming Roly Season 1, Episode 1. We're about to talk about it all. Last but not least, if you would like to support and join the Damien After Dark movement, in the description box below will be ways that you can donate using PayPal, Cash App, Venmo, and Zelle. I'll also post my Amazon wish list. Please be mindful that if you leave a super chat that YouTube will take 50% of the money you donate. So if you donate $10, YouTube will take five of the money that you donate. All right? Thank you guys for the love, the support, the donations, the likes, comments, subscribing, all that. Okay? Love y'all. So, I'm glad to be back. I'm glad to be back with you all. I'm glad to be back in our regular routine of talking shit each and every week. You know that Baddies Caribbean is coming up. I'm about to be doing a... Uh, video on the teaser so stay tuned for that um and we will be talking baddies caribbean we will be talking baddies caribbean on the upcoming season of my podcast so stay tuned the baddies caribbean after show will be going to um my podcast we'll be talking about it there still be here on youtube but we're going to be changing things up a little bit um and I'm going to be doing separate videos on Baddies Caribbean too. Y'all know how y'all were, were asking me, please, can you go back to doing the normal recaps of the videos and not do them live? So I'm going to be doing that, but I'm also going to be talking about it live too. So best of both worlds, okay? Let's get into the episode. Episode one of Transforming Rolly. Now, disclaimer before we begin. Disclaimer, disclaimer, disclaimer for all you dents bird brain ass bitches out there that are going to come in the comment section potentially and talk about oh roly this roly that you're just a hater blah 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 because i love roly y'all know that i've said that from the get-go let the record be known let it be clear go back and watch my past videos i have said that i love roly she's one of my favorite baddies if not my favorite baddies and i know that's an unpopular opinion I know a lot of people do not like Roly, including a lot of my subscribers here that watch me. But y'all know that I've said what? I like Roly. I've supported her over the years. I've defended her over the years. But also at the same time, at the same time, I've called it out and kept it a hundred when I don't agree with something, right? And um, the truth is, the truth is that this show is in trouble, and I'm worried. After watching episode one, I'm worried, okay? Um, I'm worried that I'm not going to be able to finish the season. Just to be uh, completely real with y'all. Um, and it's not Roly's fault, okay? So, that's another thing. God. I don't want people to think that I'm hating on Roly. This is a, oh, I think Roly's show is bad. Because I feel, here's the thing. The way Roly is, how she's so sensitive with the comments. And she's always like, because I always see her chiming back with people's comments. We've seen her in the premiere episode getting bent out of shape over what people had to say about her. I'm sure if she saw this video and what I had to say, it would piss her off. But it's not out of, it's not out of hate. It's out of love because I want, the, I wanted the show to be great. I want the show to be great. I wanted this to be an opportunity for people to see Roly outside of baddies and possibly get to know her in a different lane, a different avenue. 
and grow to love her again because we know that people haven't been feeling her, right? People didn't even want this show to air. A lot of people in the Zeus Network comments were like, we don't want to watch this shit. Who asked for this, right? But the truth be told, I think Zeus already had this show in action, filming it, and I think they already had it greenlit before all the roly fallout happened, before all the fans made the petition and didn't want her around, right? Because had the had had they had the petition happen and then she got I don't had the petition happen first, I don't think she would have ever gotten the show. Just to be real with y'all, and I love Roly. Let's be let's keep that a buck. Um, but here's the thing. Do y'all remember me telling y'all what my fear was for this show? We talked about it here. Do you remember me telling y'all that what my fear was for this show? Because see, the Zeus Network is so predictable. And y'all know 90% of the time, what I predict and what I tell y'all or what I may even know happens, comes true. And what my fear was for this show, excuse me, was that it was going to be nothing but Roly on an operating table getting cut open for eight episodes. Do y'all remember me saying that? I talked about that here. I said, if if, if Roly's going to get a spinoff and it's going to be called Transforming Roly and it's going to follow her weight loss journey, we have to, and this is just my producer mind working, okay? If we're going to do this show, we it has to be, it has to have layers to it. It can't be one dimensional. It can't be just Roly getting the weight loss because that's not a series. That's a one part, that's a one hour special, right? Do y'all see what I'm saying here? It doesn't, and it doesn't take somebody being in television or working on TV or being a producer to say that. You as a viewer at home who has watched these, has watched reality television, you know yourself. Can you watch a show for six to eight episodes of someone laying on an operating table? Because here's the thing. Like, when I saw the sneak peek for the next episode, I was hoping that we were going to get more than her being in the in the doctor's office on the operating table. Like, like okay, like, what, what can we get more? Because I want to see more. I want to see where Roly lives. I want to see what Roly does outside of baddies. I want to see her interact with her son and what her relationship's like with her son. Is it tumultuous? Is he mad at her that she's out here on the road and on TV and potentially embarrassing him on television? Is he proud of her? Is he proud that his mom is this reality star? What is Roly's mom like? What is their relationship like? You know, do y'all know what I'm saying? Like, there is so much more we could get from her and from this show and that we could have gotten out of the season premiere. Her being on the operating table should have only been five minutes of the episode. The rest, we should have gotten so much more. But that shows how fucking lazy this network and their production is. What's going on, Zeus? I mean, it's predictable. I knew this was going to happen. But goddamn, we're tired. Now, the episode begins, Roly and her manager, Raina, are in the back of a Suburban. They're heading to Roly's first doctor's appointment or whatever, right? Roly's talking about how she's nervous, of how she's going to look, because she's doing a tummy tuck in the next six months, unless she decides to have a baby. Now, that kind of threw me for a loop, because I've never heard Roly talk about wanting to have another child. Um, not that I didn't think that, not that she didn't want to, or that I thought she didn't want to, or heard her say she didn't want to, or anything like that. It's just that if I was at the height of my career, like she is, and I was making all this money, and I was on a television show, and I was getting sponsorships, and I was constantly getting to travel and do things that I've never done before, the last thing that I would want to do is hinder that with a child. And I'm not saying children are burdens or anything, but we know that having a child stops and slows down everything like Roly, you won't you're not what you want and you're what you want need that's not going to be the priority then your child would be so it was just confusing to me like why would you want to have a baby right now and she's still somewhat young she's like what 32 33 
34, you could still wait a few years and have you like if it was me, I would like give myself a few years to rack up some money, really get out here and hustle in this industry. And then I would maybe try to have a child. But who am I to, to tell anybody, much less a woman, what to do with their body? Um, now, Rolly also says to her booking manager that it's important for her after this surgery to still be a plus size uh, girl. Um, you know, I guess pretty much she's saying that she doesn't want to lose so much weight that she's super thin and she's no longer a plus size girl. And I can understand what she's saying and, you know, when she said that. Um, because here's the thing, life would be boring if we were all walking around stick thin like me, right? And um, I think she's always been happy as a bigger, fuller figure, thicker woman. I just think that she wanted to be a little bit smaller than what she was. And I can see that, you know, because listen, I love me a cur body curvilicious pussy, so delicious type woman, okay? Curvy, y'all know. I, I like, I do, I do. I don't mean sexually. I just, like, I just love me some thick women. Like, they're beautiful, all right? Now, I was distracted by the car scene, and this is a stupid me thing, only because of Raina's, the booking manager, that tote bag that she had on her lap. That like olive green Mark Jacobs tote bag. I kept just looking at it because I had the exact same one except black. I had the exact same tote bag, same sh the same shape, model, everything in black. And someone stole it, and I was devastated because that was my favorite bag ever. I loved that bag. It was so durable. It was so um, just. Uh, I just loved it, and I never spent. I don't know about y'all, but I don't spend money on like designer stuff i don't buy like i have a few like name brand stuff like i have a car logo carl lagerfeld shirt some, somewhere i have um you know i've had a few little things here and there that's like not super expensive um and that mark jacobs bag was one of them that i bought i bought that as like a splurge for myself and some dope-headed bitch and stole it and like an idiot y'all i had my social security card in there i had my id i had debit cards in there credit cards in there passport in there weed in there medication in there bitch i had it was a gold mine they got me bitch but i've rebuilt i've rebuilt now, another note that I've taken away from this show that I noticed off the bat is that they do, they're do they doing this show just like they did Blueface and Krishan's show. Like, I wish whoever produced Jocelyn's show would do this show, would do all the shows. Because whoever produced Rolly's show, they don't do, just like Blueface and Krishan's show, there's no confessionals. There's no interviews. Like, I don't understand that because then it, to me, it's not a reality show. It's a, this is a documentary. Why don't we have confessionals? Why don't we have interviews? I want to see and I want to see and hear Rolly's point of view throughout the season of what's going on, Zeus. Like, come on, why are we being lazy here? We're being lazy. I don't like it. It's given documentary. And another thing I don't like, why am I seeing Rolly's puss and titties? Well, it looks like puss, I think. You know, we got big, saggy titties hanging out. No shade, Rolly. I love you, baby, but I'm just calling it what it is. Just big, saggy titties coming in. And Rolly knows that, too, because she says she wanted them reduced and lifted. And I can see why. You know what I mean? Um, but I wish, I mean, I would have blurred some of that. I don't care to see it. No shade. Uh, you know, I, I'm people probably wouldn't want to see me naked on TV. Uh, you know, I'm sure. Let, let's, let's blur it. Um. You know, so the show starts, it's going straight. Rolly goes straight into the to the doctor's office. They're going straight into the surgery stuff. The doctor has the marker and they're right. You know how like before someone gets weight loss surgery, y'all watched my 600 pound life on TLC. The doctor will take the marker and they'll write all over your body where they're going to cut you up at and yada, yada, yada. And what, what's going to happen? So we're seeing all that happen. And um, I'm just like, I don't want to see eight episodes of her in this surgery shit. I don't. I don't. Now, 
the doc, she gets on the, 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 the surgery table and they start, now keep in mind, I'm ignorant to a lot of this stuff. I'm not in the medical field. I don't claim to be a doctor. I don't know it. So correct me if I'm wrong with anything that I say. If there's anybody in the comments, if there's anybody in the comments that is in the medical profession and I say anything incorrect or I spread misinformation by accident, correct me, okay? But, it, you know, they were spraying something on her that looked like blood. I don't know if that's like a numbing agent or what. I think that's what it was. But they were spraying stuff on her. And I'm just like, this, the entire episode I watched this, I'm like, I wouldn't let these people operate on me if I had all the money or if they gave me all the money and fame in the world. I just wouldn't. Because here's the thing. Apparently, she is at Gold's Plastic Surgery in Atlanta, which if you know anything about Gold's Plastic Surgery, they allegedly are notorious. And I say allegedly because I don't know this for a fact. But they allegedly are notorious for being a chop shop. Yes, bitch, you heard right. A motherfucking chop shop. Okay? Um, now, when I say chop shop, I mean, I've, I've read and heard that they have horrible reviews of people being unsatisfied with their surgeries, people not coming out of their surgeries, not making it out alive, allegedly. People losing limbs, allegedly. Go Google it. I ain't gonna make this shit up. Go Google Gold's plastic surgery and see that's why Roly was getting so upset with what people were saying online during this episode because everyone was like, "Girl, you going to a chop shop? Girl, you finna make you better make sure you come out alive, bitch. Girl, your ass finna look lopsided allegedly." And I'm sorry, y'all. I'm sorry, and for anybody that's been to goals or have or, or has had a surgery like this done, please forgive me when I say this, but I'm sorry. I would not let any I don't bitch, I don't care if you board certified. I don't care if you're the best doctor in the world. I don't care if you worked on Beyonce, Rihanna, Nicki Minaj. I ain't let nobody operate on my body while I'm wide awake. No. Thank you. Is Rolly out of her motherfucking mind, bitch? Am I the only one that felt this way while watching this shit? She laying on that motherfucking operating table, wide awake, just like this. Like she's sleeping at home. Like she, like, like she finna lay down and watch Netflix, bitch. And these people have these medical tools, this long ass fucking stick, just going in and out of her body while she wide awake laying there. Oh, oh, ow, oh, oh. I was just like, I'm stunned. I couldn't stomach it. I was shocked. <laughs> I couldn't watch. What the fuck? What the fuck? Roly says, as she's laying there on the operating table, this is the weirdest shit I've ever felt in my life. Bitch, you think? You're laying there wide awake while someone has got an object in your body and they're moving in and out. Oh, bitch, that gives me the motherfucking, the wiggles, ho. <laughs> no, no, no. And then the doctor, the Russian doctor's like, um, I'm, I'm, you'll be okay. I'm pretty sure. You'll be okay. I'm pretty sure. You pretty sure? Y'all, and when that lady took that long ass motherfucking specter looking thing that long ass motherfucking look needle looking thing and she stuck it right down in Rolly's belly button and liquid started pouring out bitch i thought i was watching motherfucking wrong turn saw freddy fucking kruger bitch what the fuck oh my belly button hurts while i'm thinking about it mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. no ma'am Ain't no way. What the future say? Ain't no way. Ain't no fucking way. This shit 
this shit would traumatize me. If I had this surgery done, I would have nightmares. For and may, and Listen, maybe I'm being dramatic, but I would have nightmares for weeks. I'm sorry. I would. I, I I would have to be put under anesthesia. I had to be I had to be put under under anesthesia just to get my wisdom teeth taken out. Like it, if I get anything done past getting a cavity filled, I got to be put under. If they're doing anything to cut my body open and mess with organs and stuff, bitch, I got to go under. I'm sorry, and I don't understand. Like, why can't Rolly be put under anesthesia? Because when she talked to one of her friends, her friends even asked her, did you go under? And she was like, no, I was awake. Is it her BMI? Is it her body? Is it her body weight the reason why? Because, you know, it, when, you, when you are at a certain body weight, you can't go under anesthesia because it's too risky. So I could understand that almost to a degree, but even if that was the case, I would just lose the weight until I got to the weight that I could go under. That's just me. Before I would have someone do like this to my body while I'm wide awake with a long motherfucking, whatever that is, I would have to meet the BMI standards. I don't know if that's the case, but yeah. Mind y'all, the entire time I'm watching this, bitch, I got a quart of Oreo ice cream that I'm trying to I got a quart of Oreo ice cream that I'm trying to eat while I'm watching and taking notes. And I'm just like, I can't really stomach this right now. I think I'll wait and eat this later. Um, Because I'm literally seeing blood and fat being transferred. And yeah, it's just. Now, in traditional Zeus fashion, most of the episode is Roly lying on the operating table. Again, this could have been five minutes, but instead they focused on us seeing her get fat transferred from her body to a jar, to a pitcher. I mean, it's just, it's just lazy. At one point when the doctor's sitting there going in and out of her body, fat literally squirted from her body and hit the camera and then... Rolly's big ass cheeks are just sitting there with fat. Yes, y'all. Literal fat from her body squirted all over her butt cheeks. And the doctor or the doctor's nurse assistant or whatever is like, oh, Rolly, you squirted all over the cameraman. And I'm just like, this is the nastiest shit I think I've ever seen. I'm sorry. It's just like, I don't want to. And maybe I should have prepared myself because I knew that there was going to be something like this. But I didn't. I don't want to see. And it could have been anybody, y'all. It could have been anybody laying on that operating table. It's gross. Like, of all things, I don't want to, like, oh, God. I wish we could have had a trigger warning. It was, it's the, it's the fat squirting out that's gross to me. Like, bleh, bleh. you know what I mean? And it's like, the whole doctor's office is just sus to me. It's all shady to me. Was the nurse assistant even wearing a mask during the procedure while she's sitting there talking the whole time? Like, it just seemed unsanitary. Like, it didn't, well, not unsanitary. It just didn't seem like, like, if we're having a surgery, why are people in the room without masks? Why? Like, I, I don't know. Am I wrong here? Now, Natalie FaceTimes Rolly while she's at the doctor's office, and Natalie was laying at home in the bed. I was shocked. I'm like, Natalie goes home? <laughs> Natalie goes home and relaxes and lays in the bed and sees her family and, you know, takes time off work? Well, that's I thought Natalie was just in a different state every day. Um. Now, did y'all notice when Rolly left the doctor's office the lady that owns the doctor's office the lady i think that i think they're owned by like russian people or something because i noticed that the doctor that was doing all the incision stuff was russian and then the lady that owned the office was russian too and she came out when roly was um leaving and she was talking to Rolly and Rolly she was like how was your experience and Rolly was like oh it was great and she said yes that is what we want people to know 
that you're okay and that you're smiling and, you know, that we allegedly don't have all these horrible reviews. See, Goals is doing this. What they do is they get influencers. They get reality stars. They tell them, hey, come get your body done for free. And you just tell people how great we are. And then they started getting all these negative reviews from regular people like you and I who went in there to get their bodies done. So now, you know, they're, Roly's doing this reality show and it's a good way for Gold's plastic surgery to allegedly do damage control, right? This is a great way for them to see, see, everything's okay and nothing happens here. You can come get your body done here and... You know, you come looking snatched. You know, we won't, we won't, we won't sever a leg or anything. We won't, we won't remove your arm. <laughs> we won't put your stomach. We won't put your, um, your, 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 your ass cheeks on your shoulder or anything. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like it's a way for them to, and granted, look, I'm sure lots of people have gone there and had great experiences. I don't know. I've never been there. I'm just telling y'all what the people be saying, what the streets be saying. Okay. Now, I also didn't realize that Kat from BGC Miami and Baddies West, I didn't realize that her and Roly were friends like that or close like that, but I guess they really bonded during Baddies West. Or I don't know, at some point they really bonded because Kat FaceTimed Roly after her procedure as well to check up on her and to talk to her. Y'all know we love us some Kat over here. Um, now, another thing that I saw, like, so many red flags with the Gold's Plastic Surgery Place while we're on that topic. Um, Roly, when she left, while, you know, she's laying on her stomach in the back of the Suburban because she can't sit on her ass for a few weeks. So, she's laying there and she says that she's in pain and that she needs some pain pills. And the doctor gonna tell her to go get some motherfucking Tylenol extra strength, bitch. Where the fuck they do that at? What? And see, that's what I'm like. Do these doctors, are these doctors even board certified? Do they even have their PhD, bitch? Do, are these even real doctors? Because I'm just like, if, when you go get a medical procedure done, you go get a surgery done, you go get something done like that, they prescribe you with something to alleviate the pain. They don't tell you to go take some motherfucking Tylenol extra strength. Am I wrong? Somebody tell me, is this some new age medical shit that I don't know about? Why didn't the doctor prescribe her no Percocets, bitch? Why didn't she get no kind of pain medicine? I mean, can I get some ibuprofen 500 or whatever they the doctor can prescribe? You know, the ibuprofen that's, the, the, the ibuprofen that's not over the counter, the kind that the doctor got to prescribe. Like, you ain't got to give me no... You ain't got to give me no pain medicine that's got the good shit in it. Just give me something to alleviate the pain that ain't Tylenol over the counter. I don't know. Something ain't adding up at this place. Something ain't adding up in this place. Now, as Roly is laying in the back of the Suburban and they're riding around, one of the things that I noticed in this episode that she's done quite a few times is she's on her phone and she's reading the comments of what the fans have to say because not only is she documenting this whole weight loss journey, surgery journey on the Zeus Network, she's documenting some of it through her phone, through her Instagram stories and through reels and things like that. And she's reading the comments of what all these people have to say. And she's laying there and she's bitching and complaining over what these people have to say about her. Like, one of the things that someone said that bothered her was, like, who in their right mind would do something like this? Because she posted a video of a doctor going in and out of her body while she's wide awake. And someone said the same thing that I'm thinking. Who in their right mind would do something like that? this? And that triggered the ro triggered Rolly and pissed her off. And she's sitting there, like, crying, upset over this valid question. I don't know. Is it just me? Like, I've never seen someone get operated like that on a on a table wide awake and then on top of it don't get prescribed no perks or nothing no baby now she's on facetime with big sexy who i think is like an influencer or something and she's complaining to him about how masika y'all know who masika is from love and hip-hop now zeus tried to bleep her name out, but we can clearly see Roly mouthing 
Masika's name. Um, so she's complaining about Masika, a comment that Masika had made. Because I remember when, I don't remember what the comment exactly said, but I remember when Roly had originally posted about her surgery and Masika had made a comment about like, I don't know, something about goals or something about her getting it done wide awake or something. Or maybe it was about, you know, getting, I don't know, getting weight loss done the natural way and going and exercising, something like that. Um, and Roly, you know, she's like, I'm a healthy big girl. My doctor approved of this surgery. She says people are bashing her for trying to change her life and trying to be healthy. She's like, I'm just tired of trying to explain myself to people. And she's crying. And I'm like, baby, sweetheart, that's the problem. You ain't got to explain shit to nobody. Why are you sitting up here crying? about having to explain shit to people and worried about these comments. You're giving a lot of these people what they want. You're literally filming a show, making all this money, living your best life, getting your best body, working on your health. Focus on you, Roly. You worry about what these people say. Fuck these people. Fuck these people. I love Roly. I really do. But, like, this is the problem with her. Like... You caught up in these comments and what these people have to say. Unless they're your supporters, I wouldn't give a shit what they got to say. Like, you can tell. Like, and, and if you, if Roly, if you go look at Roly's Instagram, go to the comments. She literally only responds, really, to negative comments. And she's, like, going back and forth with people. I'm like, girl, fuck them people. So I leave a negative page. When people leave negative comments on my page, half the time I don't even know because I don't even read them. And when I do read them, I leave them there because that's a representation of you. Right? So let me know what y'all thought about the season premiere of Transforming Roly. What do you give it on a scale of 1 to 10? If I had to write the season premiere of this episode, I would probably give it a 4. Yeah, it needs a lot of improvement. Y'all need to go to the editing room and, and cut a lot of this shit that you've got. Go back to the drawing board. You know, I would I would really do something fast because we don't want to watch this for eight episodes, for six, even two episodes. Like, if we're not seeing something different next week and the week after, I like I, I don't care. I'm going to end up bowing out early. And I don't want to do that, but I don't know. Let me know what you guys think in the comments about this episode. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and like this video. If you want to join the Damien After Dark movement, in the description box below will be ways that you can donate. PayPal, Cash App, Venmo, Zelle. I'll also post my Amazon wish list if you want to go, go that route. Um, this is my new little job now, so this is how I make my money, kind of, part-time. So, any dollar helps and goes a long way. Thank you for the love, the support, the donations, um, all of that. Please remember that you are so special and you are so important and that you woke up today for a reason. If you opened your eyes today, you have a purpose. God woke you up today for a purpose because somebody took their last breath today. But you're still here. You're still here. You made it, okay? So, Start tomorrow fresh, change your mindset, be positive, say your affirmations, because like I always tell y'all, it's not a bad life. It's just a bad day. Push through the pain, push through the pain to your purpose, okay? Live your dreams, follow your dreams, and put yourself first. Love yourself. Don't put no man first. Don't put no woman first. You promise? Put you first. I love you. We'll see you next time on Damien After Dark. Bye.